Just because it's hot out doesn't mean that the knitting stops. So this week, I thought that I would share with you my plans of what I want to knit this summer. Hello! Welcome to Show and Tell Meg. I'm Megan, and I like to make things. So my plans don't stop just because it gets hot outside. They just shift a little bit. And about a month ago, I put up a poll on my community tab, which if you're interested in contributing to what I might post on this channel, please do subscribe so that you can be notified when I put something on the community tab. But I put up a poll about what sweater I should knit next. I had just finished my Rose Street cardigan, which I do have a video of. I will post that in the corner. And I always like to have a sweater going and I couldn't quite decide. I have several warm weather plans and once the planning gears start turning, they tend to keep going. And so I couldn't quite decide what I wanted to make. So I put the poll up on the community tab and you guys chose. And this is basically that in real life. So you can see what things I had as options and what things I am actually making now. The option that won the poll was definitely the yellow linen t-shirt. I bought this linen last summer when I was kind of in an obsession with this idea of knitting a linen shirt and then I didn't make anything but I really wanted to. So I actually bought this yarn with a particular project in mind. I wanted to make the solstice top from Lovely Lace Knits, which is a print book that I actually picked up at my local library. And I don't know if that's going to come off really well. I'll put a picture up if this isn't focusing. Um, but it's just a very pretty basic t-shirt with a lace and bobble design in the front. And I was inspired by this photo to get this color, which this is knit in wool. I'm knitting it in linen. And I knew that that was going to come with some challenges, but I just really wanted to give it a try. I have a ready to wear linen top that I've actually shown here before. I can link that video as well in my video about knitting for the heat. And I really like that sweater. Even though it's so hot outside, I can still wear this sweater technically. It's short sleeved, it's 100% linen, and it wears really well. So this pattern has you start at the front, you knit to the point that the neckline catches on on both sides and then you connect them and then you start knitting this lace and bobble pattern which wow i mean when i look at it held up here i actually really like it a lot more <laughs> it kind of made me a little unsure how it was going to look while i'm knitting it and to be honest like the bobbles aren't exactly super neat because linen just doesn't have that spring back that wool does but I'm kind of embracing that and I think it's gonna be really cute. So, so far, this is what I have. And I am a bit worried about how wide the neckline is, to be honest. I might have to employ some of my tricks that I know of, like an elastic neckline, or I don't think that the pattern has you pick up a neckline band. I might have to do that, but I'm just knitting it. I, I'm enjoying the process of it. It's a pretty easy pattern. It is a double-sided lace pattern, so I have to pay attention to each and every row. I'm actually going to bust out my cross-stitch um, magnetic board <laughs> that I use for these sometimes so that I can keep track of where I am. Um, my trick for that is the cross-stitch magnetic board with the magnet strips where you can mark off, like you can slide that down to show which one you're on next and also friction pens, because then I can mark, okay, this is the last one that I did, and then I can erase it the next time. So you're welcome. And yeah, I am having a lot of fun knitting this. So that is definitely in the works. It is the winner. So if you were one who voted, then stay tuned because you're gonna see this hopefully by the end of summer. We'll see how long. I mean, it is a fingering weight linen shirt. So I've been knitting it for, I don't know, a week and a half or two weeks, but honestly, I haven't had all that much knitting time. I've been doing a big sewing project. So we're gonna see how quickly this works up, but I'm excited to get this one made. The runner up in the poll was my Four Seasons blouse, which I'll put a picture up here because I have the pattern printed, but it doesn't show the version that I'm going to make. It has a lot of options. So it's the Four Seasons blouse. 
Knitted in Lotus Yarns Mimi, which is actually a yarn that I picked up from Timu, and I very controversially posted a video of that like a month ago. <laughs> uh, so if you're interested in that, I will post that in the corner. Um, but this is a lovely yarn. It is a lace weight, though. It is very thin, and so I knitted this um, with two strands of the Mimi. I did experiment in my swatch this little strip right here is where I did it single. Like that's just one strand of it. And I don't like the fabric. It's, it's too see-through. You can see my hand through that. And I mean, a white sweater is going to be somewhat see-through anyway. Um, and I blocked it and everything. So this is exactly what it would work up as. I got gauge and I was planning on making the short sleeve version that buttons up the front. She calls it a blouse. I would be using it as a cardigan. But the cool thing with this pattern is you can do bishop sleeves or short sleeves and it has this yoke detail on the front and the back and she includes four different designs. You have two different cable ones and two different lace ones. And I'm honestly, I'm very torn as to which one. I really like the spring, but I also really like the winter and fall. Um, so I haven't decided which one of these I'm going to do. I don't have to yet anyway, because when I was knitting this swatch, I mean, you can see this is the drape that I got. I was expecting it to be a bit drapier than this, to be perfectly honest. I know it, it looks like it's draping fine, but I mean, see how it holds that shape? And it's it's very soft, but I think this is going to be a bit warm for the summer. I was thinking, you know, it's a very lightweight yarn. This is also a, let's see, cashmere angora viscose blend, I think. I'll put the fiber composition somewhere on here. Um, but yeah, I, because of those elements, I thought that it would be a good, you know, light summer spring kind of thing. But once I made the swatch, it is not quite warm weather friendly. So I'm definitely still going to make this. And I think it's going to be a super useful sweater to have. I mean, a nice white short sleeve sweater I can wear with all kinds of dresses and things like that, particularly as we get into the fall. So I'm thinking this is going to be more of a late summer knit uh, than what I originally planned. So if you voted on this one, I'm very sorry, but I didn't know. I And the reason that I swatched it was because it was doing really well in the poll. And I'm like, okay, I guess I better swatch this and make sure it's going to work out fine. And yeah, this is why we swatch. This took me like a couple of hours to knit. And it saved me from getting so far into the project and then finding out, oh, this is probably not something I'm going to wear in the summer. So maybe I should have waited. So that one will be coming at the end of the summer. Stay tuned for that if you are interested. The third option that I gave was a beautiful skein of yarn. And I've actually already, I've already knitted this. So I'm going to put in a reel of me showing the uh the original skein i was given this when a friend of mine was de-stashing and i'm telling you it was the most epic de-stash ever i am so grateful for the things that she gave me this was a very expensive skein of yarn and it's just beautiful <laughs> like i am not one who wears metallics i don't go for sparkly things really but everyone who looks at this yarn is like, wow, that is so pretty. And this is by Blue Heron Yarns, and it is their rayon metallic. It's 100% rayon, and it has this copper metallic strand in it. And it's only one skein, and this is very expensive. So I was not going to go buy another one. And so I always mentally had this earmarked for a shawl because I thought that was all I could really make out of it. But the skein does have 550 yards. And so I started looking through my Ravelry library. Like if you don't have your patterns on Ravelry, what are you doing? It makes things so much easier. I can plan. I have all my yarn and my patterns listed on Ravelry. So I can pre-plan all the stuff I'm going to make and know if I have enough yarn, know what it looked like when other people used this type of yarn, etc. And so I started hunting by yardage in this size of yarn. It's a DK weight. And I came up with the Samar. Samar? How do you, how do you say that? I believe it's 
Swedish or Norwegian or something. It's the word for summer. Um, and this, I actually had like a couple of yards extra of yarn at the end and I still kind of can't believe it. So this was a short sleeved waist length lace back sweater. And so, I mean, I feel silly calling it a sweater, but it is. And I love it. I have still not blocked this. So this will be showing up again, maybe later once it's blocked. But I mean, even without blocking, it looks super even. I love the colors that are in this. Um, yeah, it's just, it's everything and more that I hoped it would be. So this actually ended up being the first thing that I made originally I was just winding up the yarn to make a swatch out of it. But then when I was going to make a swatch, I realized I was worried I wasn't going to have enough yarn to make a swatch and make the sweater. And then I'd have to undo the swatch and et cetera. So I just knitted the sweater. <laughs> it was knitted on bigger needles. I believe it was a size eight and it's all lacy. So this I slapped this out in, I believe, two weeks. Um, so this, this is a fantastic sweater. If you need a quick project in a beautiful yarn, I, I really dig this pattern. So I will link it below if you're interested. It, it's a great one when you have a limited amount of yarn. My final option on the poll was to knit the Audrey in Unst, and I will show a picture of that to the side. This is kind of a tried and true, you know, like 10 years ago, everyone was making this sweater. And it takes a sport weight yarn. I specifically bought this Knit Picks Wool of the Andes in Blackberry. I know it looks black, but it is, see in the light, it's a very, very dark purple. And this I actually cast on this swatch when it was still cold outside, knowing that was what I wanted to make next. But then it got set to the side. I didn't finish. I worked on my Rose Street. I really got that done instead of splitting my time between two sweaters. And, you know, when summer came around, this was sitting and ready, but I just didn't want to knit a wool sweater when I could be knitting something that was more summer appropriate. So this was on the pole too. It definitely came in last. This is going to be happening later in the year. Um, I really like this color. I, I, I do, it does make me miss wool. <laughs> it's been a little while since I knitted with wool, especially when this squishy, um, cause this is just a hardy classic basic wool. Um, but yeah, so this one will be happening. I know I've mentioned it in a few other things, but I finally finished the swatch. I haven't even blocked it yet, but I did get gauge. So Audrey and Unce will be happening probably in the winter time or when we get closer to the fall at least. And then the last thing on my list is a rather frivolous thing. I love making toys and I usually try to have a toy every now and then, but I have so many at this point that I kind of limit myself. But I saw this one pattern and I, I'm to the point with crocheting animals that I can kind of look at an animal and figure out how to make it. I'm looking at this pattern. I'm like, how did she do that? So. It is Larry the Lobster, and I cannot remember the name of the person who made this design. I will put it up on the screen. And it is a an amigurumi lobster, but he has an articulated tail. Like, you can twist it, and that is just the coolest thing. And so I actually bought this pattern. I don't usually buy crocheted amigurumi patterns, but I wanted to see how this was made. So I bought the pattern, and I have had him on my queue to make for the last couple of months, but I've been really dedicated with the things I was knitting. And so I didn't start him, but I thrifted this yarn. This is Bernat Baby Blanket Sparkle. So it, it also has some sparkle, like this is the summer of sparkle, I guess. Very subtle sparkle, but I thought that this blue would be perfect to try out this lobster. So he's gonna be made sometime soon. And you know, the irony of a crocheted animal is I will have this made in a couple of hours. So he's going to be done sometime soon and he will be adorable, I'm sure. So stay tuned if you'd like to see him. But that is everything that I have planned for this summer. Who knows if something else will scooch its way in the line, but so far that's kind of what I have going. And 
If you have plans for knitting in the summer, I hope that you can share them with me in the comments. I hope that this was inspiring to you, that you can think about knitting even in the heat. It doesn't have to be that you only knit, you know, wall hangings and bags and things like that. I feel like that's the go-to, either that or camisoles, which I don't wear. So there are patterns that you can use for warmer weather. And I hope that this could be inspiring for you to think about it in that way. And I hope that if you like this content, that you give me a like and you subscribe to stick around and see what actually gets made. Don't you want to see this lobster? I do. So subscribe if you would like to see how any of these projects turn out. And until then, I hope that you have a fantastic summer of knitting.